and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're in a special sermon series called, Why is God so silent? Today is our fourth message in this series. And it has to do with a Bible verse that we all know and love very dearly. It's a Bible verse that's found in Romans chapter 8. And the title of this message is, Do All Things Really Work Together for Good? Do they really? A seemingly healthy 12-year-old girl develops migraine headaches. Her father calls her the sunshine of his life. On Friday night, she gets ill. By Saturday evening, she's, she died. A young boy goes to church, goes to a youth camp. And while he's at the youth camp, he develops this fever. Ambulance is called. They take the young boy to the hospital. Within five hours, this young boy is dead. A policeman steps out into the streets and sees a, a guy who he knows is a drug dealer. And a struggle ensues. And in that struggle, right out there on, on Main Street in this village, in this town in USA, this drug dealer takes the gun away from the policeman and shoots the policeman. Do all things really work out together for God? Do they? Can we believe Romans 8, 28? Now, <clears throat> here's Romans 8, 28. We all know it. Let's read it together. If this is in the King James Version. This is how I learned it. Okay? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. And to be honest, there are some of us here today who doubt that. That all things work together for good. That seems unbelievable. All things? Yeah, some things. But all? Can we still believe Romans 8 and 28? Is that still true today? After all that we've been through, can we still believe it? Now there's three perspectives I'd like to share with you to keep in mind about these words. Three perspectives. First of all, God's at the center of all things. <clears throat> Let's look at Let's look at this verse, a portion of it, from different translations. Here's the New American Standard Bible. <clears throat> God causes all things to work together for good. You notice God causes all things. God's in the middle of it. He's in the middle of this verse. It's not man, not me. It's God. Second translation. NIV. <clears throat> NIV has this. In all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. Again, the center of the verse is God. <clears throat> God's at the center of things. <clears throat> Some people believe that life is like a, a roll of dice. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. It all depends. It's all like a roll of dice. It's by chance. Well, there's other people who believe that, yeah, tragedies happen. Nine months happen. Then God comes in afterwards and kind of makes things work out together. Well, those are wrong. Real wrong. God's at work in the beginning of things, the middle of things, and the end of things. God's at the center of all things. He works it all out. It's God who does the work. He is there at the beginning of tragedy, 
in the middle of tragedy and at the end of tragedy. Where was God when 9-11 happened? In New York City. Where it happened? Where was God uh, several weeks ago in Boston? He was there. In the beginning of it. At the beginning of the race, at the end of the race, he was there. Where was God in the tragedy in Texas when the explosion happened? Again, he was there. <clears throat> what do you say when a little child dies? Or what do you say when a cop is killed on Main Street? What do you say when a marriage falls apart after 41 years of marriage? What do you say? We can't minimize the tragedies. That's one thing. We can't minimize the losses. Suppose that I have a car accident and the car is all messed up. All messed up. I take it to a body shop. And the body man looks at it, and he says, oh, you, you weren't in an accident. Your car was just rearranged. <laughs> and I look at him, and I look at the car, the fender is bent in, the bumper is bent in, <clears throat> the wheels are gone, and I says, rearranged? I had an accident. You see, he's trying to minimize what I've been through. We don't minimize tragedies. They are real. They really happen. The Bible never asks us to pretend that something doesn't happen. Or pretend the pain isn't there. Is Paul saying that everything that happens is good? No. Is Paul saying that suffering and evil and tragedy are good? No. Is he saying that we don't understand why God allowed these tragedies to happen? No. Then what's he saying? What the verses say is that God is at the center of it all. He is there. He's at work. He's present in every tragedy. God is there in the darkness. <clears throat> Little children, you know, often have problems with darkness. They get scared. They get afraid because they can't see. All of a sudden they can't see anything in the dark. They get scared. But when Daddy comes into the room and sits down on the side of the bed and puts his arms around his little son or little daughter, what a difference that makes. All of a sudden, the darkness is okay. All of a sudden, yes, the darkness isn't gone. The darkness is still there. But more important, Daddy is there. So with Daddy there, the darkness is okay. So also with tragedy. When bad things happen to us, we don't minimize the badness. It's bad. We suffer. We cry. We struggle for the loss. It's darkness to us, but we know, those of us who believe in Christ, we know that God is there with us. We are not alone in that darkness. We're not alone in that tragedy. We're not alone in our suffering. Somebody is there, and that's God. That's number one. God is at the center of all suffering. God is at the center of our tragedy that happen in our life. Can we believe, Romans? Uh, to 828. Yes, but we need to start with God. God's at the center. That's number one. A second perspective that we have to realize with this verse is that we need a long-term perspective. <clears throat> a long-term perspective, not short, long. So many things in life are unexplainable. Why does a tornado destroy one house and leave another house right next to it okay? Why does one brother excel 
And the other brother turns out not himself at all. Why does a tumor come back when the doctor said that he had got it all out? You see, seen in isolation, each of these things is not good. But Paul says, we know that all things work together for good. Work together for good. The phrase, work together. Can you put that on the screen there? The thing, the, the, the words work together. The Greek word, there's one word for that that the Greek uses in the original text. And that word is synergen. That's the Greek word, synergen. We get the English word synergy from it. Synergy. You know what synergy is? Synergy. It's a putting together. It's what happens in our kitchen. When I come home, my wife makes this wonderful, wonderful hot dish. Pasta hot dish. I mean, she puts pasta in, onions in. I don't know what she puts in. She puts some things in that she doesn't tell me she puts in. <laughs> because she knows that there's some things I don't like. But what's it taste like? Wonderful. I say, honey, what's in this? She says, I'm not telling you. <laughs> See, that synergy, when you put things together of different sorts, and some are not, not good things, but you put them together with other things, it winds up good, right? Luscious. That synergy, all right? That's the word that's used in this verse. We know that all things work together. Synergy. We know how that is too with, I think, think the sawmill. That's a good industry here. Here comes this load of logs, ugly logs, homely logs. Uh, I mean, they, they, they're logs that you want to work with. Get these logs from. I mean, they're so dirty and ugly. And they put them on this pile in the, in, the, in the mill, and then slowly but surely they take these ugly logs, they pick them up with these ugly, I don't know what they're called, and they put them on this uh, conveyor, and they go into this building, and all this noise takes place in this building. You wonder what's going on in this building. It's screeching. And, oh, yeah, yeah, you wonder if somebody's getting killed in there. And lo and behold, on the other end of the sawmill, here comes out these beautiful, smooth, white two-by-fours. And you wonder, how did they get out? Where did they come from? Because on one end, the logs went in, the ugly logs. On the other end, out comes these beautiful, white, smooth two-by-fours. Somebody on the inside knew what they were doing. Even with all that noise going on, Somebody there pressed the right buttons, did the right things to make it all come out good. Over time, something beautiful was created. And that's how it is with our life. God can take the rough stuff in our lives. God can take the accidents, the tragedies, the diseases, the hospital visits. He can take all of that stuff that isn't good in itself. But he can put it together. To make it something good for us. Can we still believe in Romans 8, 28? Yes. But we need a long-term view. A long-term perspective, not short-term, but long-term. Okay, that's number two. Number three. Third perspective that I suggest that we have to have to believe Romans 8, 28. <clears throat> that's this. We must define the word good. We must define the word good. You know, that's the crux of the, of the whole issue here, really, is defining the word good. 
Paul says that all things work together for good to them that love God. What's he talking about? For most of us, good equals uh, health, happiness, long life, food, nice place to live, green from lawn, and on and on. That's good for us, isn't it? But if you look closely at the text, look closely at Romans 8, 28 and verse 29, you see God even defines what good is. Let me read that. <clears throat> and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Here it is, verse 29. Verse 29. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of His Son. To the likeness of His Son. That makes it very clear. God predestined you and me to that certain end, and that certain end is the good mentioned in verse 29. The good is that we might be conformed to the likeness of His Son. <clears throat> That's the good. See, God's good and our good are not the same. To put it plainly, God's at work in your life making you like Jesus. Making you like Jesus. He has predestined you to that end. He's at work in your life making you like Him. Therefore, anything that makes you like Jesus is good. Anything that pulls you away from that is bad. See, God's not committed to making you happy and successful. God is not committed. He's never promised you that He's going to make you uh, wealthy or give you a nice, beautiful front lawn or a nice house to live in. He's never promised you that. God isn't committed to even keeping you healthy. But God is committed. He's committed to committed to that. See, we learn more from going through darkness than we go going through light. We learn more when we're sick than when we're well. We pray more when we're scared than when we're confident. God knows how to make us like His Son. He knows what we need. That's the good. See, my good is not the same as God's good. What God wants in me is to be more like Jesus and you. And sometimes He has to bring tragedy into my life so I can be more like Jesus. You understand? You all understand that? that Makes sense? So we have to know. What's really good? I walked a mile with pleasure. She chattered all the way. But I was none the wiser for all she had to say. Then I walked a mile with sorrow. And ne'er a word said she. But oh, the lessons I did learn when sorrow walked with me. God's at work in your life. Right now. He may, he may need to send you some hard times in order to do what is good, and that is to make you more like Jesus. God uses tragedies to do that. Does that include things that hurt us deeply? Yes, it does. Does that include times when we are heartbroken? I'm afraid so. Does that include times when we even doubt God's goodness? Absolutely. Does that include the times when really, when really bad things happen to us? Yes. 
See, God's always at work. He's never deterred by what we think is good. Because he knows that what we think is good is really not good. It's just what we like. But God knows it's good. And God has our best interests in mind. What God wants of me is he wants me in eternity someday. He wants you in eternity someday. And God knows what it will take for me and you to get into eternity someday. And he knows it's more than nice front lawns and nice homes and a comfortable car that will do it. It may take some hard times to bring out the good. Can we still believe Romans 8, Romans 8, 28? Yes, but we need to properly understand what is good. So, I say, I don't know what you say, but I say we can believe Romans 8, 28. As long as we keep two things in mind. Here's two things. We must not try to explain the unexplainable. Sometimes in our, in our zeal to protect God, we try to explain what we shouldn't even try to explain. It's always a bad idea to try to explain tragedies. Because we're like little children facing, you know, a wise, a wise father. It's not possible that we understand these things. And besides that, we don't need to protect God. He can protect himself. We don't have to defend him and try to explain every tragedy that occurs. We can't do it. It's impossible. It's better to say nothing than to say something stupid. Something we know nothing about. So, let's not try to explain the unexplainable. Let's leave it to God. God knows. God knows why things happen. I don't. But He does. Let's put it in God's hands. And the second thing, the last thing, we also must understand that God knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to have tragedy. He knows what it's like to have bad times, to suffer. The story is told of a, a father whose son was killed in a terrible accident. A young son was killed in a terrible accident. He came to his pastor. And in his great anger, he says, where was God when my son died? The pastor thought for a moment. And he said, the same place he was when his son died. Did you get it? The same place he was when his son died. Because you see, God lost a son too. I forget that. And it wasn't an accident. It was planned. A planned tragedy. A planned loss. A planned hardship. That's even worse. That's the final piece of the puzzle. He knows what we are all going through in our tragedies. He's been there. He's still there. See, that's why we can say we know that all things work together. Paul said that. We know. How did Paul know? Because Paul knew God. That's why. That's what makes the difference. We know. God who is the one who gave his own son 
who knows what suffering is all about, who had to be there when his own son died on the cross and bled to death. He was there. He knows. And that's why we know that all things work together for good to those It's the truth. It's the undeniable truth. We can all sometimes doubt it. Make it a difference. It's still truth. We can sometimes deny it. It make a difference. It's still truth. It's God's truth. Romans 8, 28. Lord, help us all to understand. No, not understand. Help us all, Lord, to know. That's the word. To know you, God. So that we can always hang on to the promises of God that He's with us. No matter what. In Jesus' name.